Okay, so today making a jug tutorial or jug shake tutorial s underscore dissolve shake tutorial and uh, yeah, I'm making one because I haven't really seen any like good dissolve shake tutorials before. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip to when I like get my clips on here because this is I'm, I'm I'm like editing right now. I'm editing the uh, the video right now. So yeah, alright. So I got these clips on here. Uh, I'm just gonna twix them real quick. If you haven't seen my Twix tutorial, this like, you need to see is like I made it a couple months ago. Uh, yeah, you should probably watch that first if you don't know how to Twix or do Twixter. Or you make your scene smooth. I don't know what to call it, man. Or whatever. Yeah, Twix. Twixter. Same thing. <laughs> Alright, so here's what it looks like after Twixing. I added like one solid for some impact. Alright, so now, not to the whole point of the video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do S underscore dissolve shake. So, somebody just fell in my trash can, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you how to Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do dissolve shake now. So what you're gonna do? Um actually this is uh this is FX console. If you want it, you should probably get it. Uh pretty cool plugin, it's free. You just download it. Um but like I'm gonna show you how to do dissolve shake now. So you do need sapphire for this to do dissolve sh dissolve shake because it's like S underscore. I can't spell dissolve shake. So what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna add this actually. Before you add this, hold on, go back. <laughs> you want to add Repetile. And then what you do with this, I usually like putting it to like 400 or 600. I'm just going to do 600 because, yeah. And then you go 600 on all of these, expand right to up. Pretty much what this does is like it repeats your edges like that, as you can see there. And then you're going to want to take the tiling and put it on unfold. So that way it like reflects better and just like looks nicer, I guess. Um, and then what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to add your shake, so, S underscore, dissolve shake, <clears throat> and then, what you want to do, uh, here's what I do at least, so I turn up the dissolves percent from anywhere from like, from like 15 to like, probably like 40, and you'll see here, uh, that this starts to disappear, what dissolve percent does, at least I'm pretty sure what it does, um, it kind of like makes your shake harder, I don't really know how to explain it too well, it works similarly to amplitude, but it's it's a little different. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this at like around 30. Actually no, for the sake of this, I'm gonna make it like 45. So what you do if you get it to like start turning transparent like you see here, is you're just gonna want to turn up dissolve speed. And that's it. Just crank dissolve speed up. It won't really make much of a visual difference uh, in terms of dissolve speed. And then amplitude. Amplitude is literally just how hard your shake goes. So if you have it like way up here, it's gonna go crazy. Um, frequency is how often your shake kind of like changes. So if you, hold on, let me turn off motion blur for this. I'll show you what I mean. So if I have it like this, right? See how it's like shaking like that? See, it's like kind of jittering. If you turn this up, it'll jitter more frequently. That's why it's like frequency. And then if you turn it down, let's say you want it like really low like that, then it won't jitter as much. <clears throat> That's kind of how that works. A little hard to describe in words, obviously, but yeah. Amplitude is pretty much just how strong your shake is, quite actually. So if you have it like this, it'll be way stronger. Like, it'll move way more. It'll scale off of these numbers and move way more. So if you have this at like 192, it'll multiply this by 3 when you normally have it at like 1 or something. So that just makes it a lot stronger. <clears throat> it multiplies how strong these move i don't really know how to explain that too well uh, to be honest but if you like turn this up you'll see that this is x shake so it moves th this moves it to from left to right y shake moves it up and down and z shake moves it in and out so like scaling and then tilts move it or like they tilt it so they rotate it <clears throat> so that's kind of how that works and then what you're going to want to do so this is what i do in my settings oh uh, for amplitude i usually put this anywhere from like one to eight usually most commonly at least i'll put it like two three four five uh for this one i think i'm gonna put it at like around four or something <clears throat> and then I'm gonna, i usually turn my frequency up uh kind of depends on what kind of shake i'm going for if i'm going for like a softer shake i'll turn this down but i'm going for a harder shake on this one so i'm probably going to turn it up to like 
to like 15 or something. Then what I usually do is I'll turn my amplitude down either very low so that it's like this low or I'll turn it down to zero. For just for the shake, I'm going to turn it down to zero for the frequency. Uh, so you'll see how this looks right now. Doesn't look great, but it looks, you know, fine, I guess. Like this could work. It just depends on the scene you're using, I guess. But this is not ideal. So I usually like turning my frequency down from here. I think I'm actually going to turn my frequency up to like 20 or something. <clears throat> and then what I do on the X shake part. So I usually only touch uh, the random amp usually. And also like the phase. And sometimes I'll touch like the random frequency. Kind of just depends on what kind of shake I'm going for. I normally will not graph these at all. But uh, yeah, for amplitude, how I'd graph this. Um, I'll probably do some. I, I use a flow, flow plugin if you have it. You can use it for this. If you don't, you don't have it, I guess. I usually do these decently sharp. Oh, maybe not that sharp, though. Maybe I'll do it like that or something. Yeah, okay. That doesn't look too bad. <clears throat> and then the frequency. Uh, frequency kind of depends. Maybe I'll do like something like this. I don't know. It, it always just depends. Sometimes I'll do something like that. Something like this. Oh, it just depends. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. That looks pretty, pretty okay. Looks kind of weak though. So what I like doing is I like playing with seed. But before I do seed, I'm actually gonna turn this off. Make sure that you turn it off. Wrap. It'll just make your tiling look a little better. Um, before I do seed or anything, I'm gonna play with the uh, X shake, Y shake, and Z shake settings, and the tilt sh shake settings as well. So X shake, I usually, so the random amp amplitude works very similarly to just regular amplitude, only this is for individual uh, directions. So if you have this way high, then it'll move it left and right insane amounts. So you can kind of see how that like, that actually doesn't look too bad, <laughs> uh, but you can see how like that'll like move it left and right. And then, same thing for Y shake, I already showed you this earlier. Up and down, same for Z shake, goes in and out, tilt shake, whatever rotates. So for my y, for my X shake, sorry, uh, I usually turn this to around like 120-ish, kind of, I don't know. And then for the Y shake, I'll usually put this about like a, a lot lower than the Z shake, uh, X shake, sorry, keep messing that up. And then I'll turn up Z shake to like, usually like around 100. Sometimes I'll go way lower. Sometimes I'll go way higher. Sometimes I won't have any, but I usually go like around here, like around 100 ish, more or less. No, and then tilt shake, I usually like keeping my tilt shakes low. So anywhere from like one to three is good, I'd say. And uh, yeah. You can see this shake is really weak. So I'm going to try playing with this a little more. So I'm going to turn up the amplitude, maybe change up my graph a bit and see how that looks. It looks kind of weird. There's not a lot of impact on this. And then for seed, I usually just play around with it until I think it looks nice. So, um, we'll see. Kind of want it to be more like out like this. I'll see how that looks. Looks way more impactful. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, there's just a little bit of tiling here. So for like one frame, I think I'll scale it in a bit. Just just to see how that looks, I guess. I don't know. I think I liked it more before. It had more impact. And if you have tiling like this, what you can always do, you can always add like a, a framer. So you just make an adjustment layer with Control alt y and you can just like cut it. And then you can add like uh, some, some kind of blur. So I'm going to do like radio blur just to kind of like cover up the tiling a bit. And then just see how it looks. Looks pretty nice. It's not it's not the best shake, but you know, I'm just trying to do this pretty quickly. Looks pretty good. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one too. I'm gonna do this scene too because I just wanna like add some versatility to how to do these shakes. So um I kinda wonder already went over what everything does, so I'm not gonna do it again. Uh, uh, uh,
I'm also, I'm also gonna really quickly just add a build up shake here because I feel like it would look a little nicer. So, yeah, just gonna invert these, do something like that, and uh, change my keyframes. kind of the end result without effects and i might go over like a jug tutorial or something in the future i don't know but yeah let me know what you guys think of this uh thanks for watching bye <laughs> Sorry I had to Talking crazy is a bad move I'm still like a statue I, 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 I,